How's it going guys? My name is Graham and welcome to Two Left Thumbs. Huge Delta Rune news. I kind of had to drop everything and talk about it. There was a live stream yesterday where a group of guys, including Toby Fox using text to speech, celebrated the sixth anniversary of Undertale by streaming the entirety of Delta Rune Chapter One. They shared little bits of behind the scenes details, Toby commenting on things along the way. I'm not going to share that. The best way to get that would be watching that actual stream. But the game was ever so slightly edited to include a few jokes about speedrunning and streaming and just random other details. Details. It's not a lot, but I want to share them all here in one place. Then at the end of that, they announced a release date for Delta Rune Chapter 2, and it was only 48 hours away. That's coming tomorrow. I'm going to do my own live stream of that. I'll have a link down below. You guys should come tune in and enjoy the game with me. I mostly want to focus on the differences in game, but here's like a rapid fire few interesting details that stood out to me. Little highlights you might like to know. I love the way this place was decorated to look like the ruins. It's just fantastically well done. And it's really awesome seeing the walls decorated with these different characters. Some of them are like autographed. They put a lot of care and attention into that. They had these little pre-planned moments where someone would reach through the door and hand over objects to the streamers. There's a point where Reed puts on a set of horns and stands next to a portrait of Asgore, kind of revealing his semi-obvious cosplay that I didn't even pick up on immediately. They announced a bunch of merch, including these plushies throughout, and different figurines, and they made like this 90s style toy commercial where you just crash your cars and planes around and throw them into whatever piles of blocks and dirt and things. The faithfulness of that was fantastic. I think the sand style hoodie is a great piece of merch. I'm probably going to buy one. This moment where 3D Toriel crashes in and just kind of glitches out and shoots laser beams everywhere. Like, what the hell was that? I don't know. It was amazing. They had pop-ins from Temi, the guy who was in charge of the trailers over the years. There was tons of fun details throughout this stream. Plenty of reasons to go check it out for yourself. I don't want to spoil everything. You still got time to watch that tonight. Get yourself all ramped up for Chapter 2 coming tomorrow. But building up to that, I'm going to compare the original build of Deltarune Chapter 1 that we all have and this specialty version that they streamed. I'll show the original first, immediately followed by the alternate version. And then at the end, I'm going to breeze through the early footage they showed off for Deltarune Chapter 2. They showed us kind of the whole opening sequence of the game. There's a lot to talk about. I'm trying to fit this in on top of my regular schedule. So we gotta get going fast. Let's move, move, move. Just before I get to that, I do want to throw it out there that Two Left Thumbs, basically me, I'm publishing my first game. This is Dead Estate, being developed by the Milk Bar lads, and we just set our release date for October 19th, so just one month away. It's a top-down, pixel art, roguelike shooter with horror and Halloween themes. See, it's not the same style of game as Undertale or Deltarune. You know, it's pixel art and just set a release date. They have so many things in common. We're crazy excited for this game. The Steam page is live now. Wish lists help us out so much. It shows Steam that you guys are interested. I think this game is going to be so fun. I'm so excited that we're finally ready to share it. So yeah, I humbly put that out there and hope that you guys are interested. I'll remind you once more at the end of the video. So let's start breaking down some of the new footage and things we were shown. If it's not included in this video, it either wasn't changed or Charlie there playing through the game never interacted with it. At the very opening part of the video, during the 30 minutes before things really started, pre-stream, there was a few bits of rare dialogue and other lesser known parts of these games. I've mostly talked about them in other Undertale and Deltarune videos. There was also a few scrapped and unheard musical tracks that was cool to hear. I obviously wouldn't have covered any of those. And for the last five minutes of pre-stream, we have this annoying dog shaking their maracas around. This is building off a joke in Delta Rune Chapter 1, where you can see the annoying dog working away in the library, but instead of getting things done, he's too busy playing with his maracas. There's a little opening animation of the annoying dog skateboarding and flipping around, and I'm sure we can ignore most of it. I doubt a demolition derby's gonna matter much to the story, but who's to say? However, we do have Sans and Papyrus watching Deltarune on their TV, specifically the Dark World section, and on the same side of the TV with them is the annoying dog. That feels significant to me. It could just be a gag, the animators just threw that in, but you would think they would have been very careful about including something like that. Maybe it lends a little credence to a certain theory I have. So they started their stream at the Vessel Creation. Are we connected? Excellent. That's all as you remember it. Selecting the head, the torso, that stuff still doesn't seem to matter. Favorite food? Pain has been replaced by nacho flame and cheese. Reed on the far side there asks Toby if blood type will matter, and Toby's response is, 
wait and see. So who knows if any of the vessel is going to matter, or if he was specifically hinting at blood, or he was just telling Reed to leave him alone and just go play the game. Our creation is still discarded for the time being, who knows with the upcoming chapter. Now most objects have their description in brackets. You're kind of thinking to yourself, I guess. Chris thinking it's your bed has changed to your bed. And the warning about going back to sleep is no longer there. Presumably they just changed this out because they didn't want these guys streaming to accidentally do like the speedrun version skipping the opening part of the game, so it was just disabled. Hmm? You need a partner? Sorry, I'm already partners with the second smartest student. Though, wait! Chris, now that I think about it, your unique skill set might help a lot on this assignment. <laughs> not! I actually want to get an A. Ah, oh, Chris, sorry, I already asked Noel. If only you'd come a little earlier and asked me first. Maybe we could have been partners. Maybe we could have streamed our study sessions. Not! Me and Noel are the ultimate combination. We have grinded our int to <clears throat> the ninth percentile. Now get out of here, you're making me lose subscribers. If you talk to Birdly again, Ask elsewhere, Chris. I actually want to get an A. If you can't get anyone, maybe your mom will be your partner again. Just devastating. A devastating insult. Chris, I've seen your four-hour marathon streams. Pitiful. Just pitiful the whole way through. Ah, Chris, sometimes I feel like my brain is so full, the cracks have all filled in. What do you call that? <laughs> Smooth brain? That's me. And the funny thing is that these guys streaming this game, it was a four hour stream. Normally you can come and talk to this guy about his cake. He's upset because Susie showed up and started eating it like an animal climbing up on the table. If he decided to backtrack at all, he's still just hanging out same place in, in the forest here. When they backtrack on stream, he just explodes. I assume they didn't just kill the character off that unceremoniously. It's like Toby's punishing his friends for backtracking it all. Just keep things moving forward. Immediately to the left of the bake sale, where normally we have the glowing shortcut door, they added this little worm character coming out of the ground. I'm Newbert. Possibly a joke about being new. Everybody loves me. My man. <laughs> that's, that's all there is for Newbert. Probably my new favorite character. Now normally you have to assemble the different parts of the key to access this cell that Jevil is hidden behind in order to access that secret boss battle. For the sake of this stream, they hid a little key at the top of the stairs so they wouldn't have to backtrack and run through the map to collect all the pieces. There's a key here. It's caked in dog fur and frosting. You picked up the fully formed prison key. <laughs> Just acknowledging that it's just been slapped together with loose materials, dog-related materials. That stray pixel in this fight was never patched up. Still there, still driving me crazy. At the end part, right before Chris and Susie are going to leave the dark world, you can choose to come back and wish everyone a goodbye. Even though he was only present for like one scene and like one line of dialogue, Newbert is here. His dialogue is about as informative as last time. I'm Newbert. Everybody loves me. My man. A fun little thing that people might enjoy finally having cleared up. This was confirmed by Toby on stream. After first joking that this was indeed Squidward, bold and brash, since that's what people commonly thought that it might have been. It's a yellowed, poorly drawn picture of a green turtle. It's signed Alvin. So people thought maybe Alvin in town had drawn a picture of himself. This is actually an old picture Alvin drew when they were a child of their father, Gerson. Although on stream with Toby's text to speech, it came out Gerson, but I, I think that's just the computer's inability to pronounce it. Who knows, maybe it is meant to be Gerson. Upon leaving the school, heading out to the right on the other side of this fence, we have this dancing, impish, gnome like character talking to Birdly at the library. Chris, you survived Susie? I was getting worried. Now you can finally pay off your family debt. How to Draw Dragons is 2,583 days overdue. However, Chris, I am a benevolent volunteer assistant. If you turn it in this week, I'll reduce your fine to a mere 6423. Consider it, Chris. And in the streamed version, Chris, 
You survived Susie? You missed my Smashing Fighters Moss Percent speed run. What? You're still above me in the leaderboards? Please, Chris. Soon everyone will know your secret. I've been working on a 40-minute documentary proving that you spliced your run. Soon you'll have no choice but to bow at my crispy golden feet. Talking to Birdly a second time. Ah, did you forget what it looks like? The front is, perhaps, a mauve dragon wearing lipstick. As for her clothes, I believe they are, well, you know, Chris, I think you'll know it when you see it. And the alternate dialogue? Ah, Chris, still streaming your visage to my eyes? I wish I could unsubscribe from your presence. There's some minor art tweaks in this room. The door to the computer lab is now a set of double doors, and the info plaque next to it is on the left instead of the right. We can see that some very slight alterations have been made to Noelle's dialogue portrait. The main thing being, rather than her hair cutting off at the bottom below her neck, we have a little bit more texture to it. Just you know, a few little triangles cut out of it at the bottom there. None of the dialogue with Sans has been changed, and when you knock on their front door, there's still the distant trousel of bones. But on the balcony, we get to see the annoying dog shaking his maracas. We've now seen that in the intro to this stream. We know that's what's happening within the computer lab. That may be a hint that something major is coming with Papyrus or with this house. You know, this is where the annoying dog is specifically focusing right now. I guess we'll know pretty soon. Way back in the original version of Chapter 1, both Sans and Onion San dropped hints for us to come back tomorrow, something that didn't exist in that first chapter. But none of those teases were added to, just two things to keep in mind and follow up with as soon as chapter 2 is available. Now, I have to acknowledge the ties to Gaster here. It's been six years since Undertale's release, six being the primary number associated with Gaster. Delta Room Chapter 2 is dropping on the 17th of September, the ninth month. Nine is an upside down six, and 17 could just be a Friday release, but it's probably more than likely meant to make you think of Entry 17. I have a series of videos that cover the secrets and evidence for all things Gaster up to this point, so that would be including Undertale and Delta Rune Chapter 1. I would say if you want to get really amped up for Chapter 2, those videos are definitely worth your time. The first one's available now. I'm doing a rushed edit on the second one, and hopefully it'll be live before Chapter 2 launches in the very near future. The stream ended same as chapter 1 did with Chris going to bed and ending that chapter of your adventure. Chris starts thrashing around and gets physically tossed out of their own bed, lurching around the room. They make their way to the middle and rip out their heart. This gets tossed into the battered birdcage in the corner, revealing maybe a bit of why it looks like it's been repeatedly crashed around as was said at the start of the game, and Chris pulls out a dagger or knife of some kind before giving the camera a wicked grin and a red glint of the eye. And that's all we've had. That's all we've had for like three years now. It's basically a complete game, which is nuts, but is only a fraction of this much larger story. That end sequence played out the same on stream, straight through the end credit sequence. But at the end, after our message of to be continued, Two choices come up on screen. The option to keep playing chapter one, which I don't really know what that would do. Where, where in the story would you be left off? Just your most recent save file, hard to say, or continue to chapter two. The live cam fades back in, showing the annoying dog on the couch where they left him before he gets up and walks over to the controller. Their dedication to these little bits, having people pop in through the door and handing in different plushies and pieces of merch and things was so great. They made this feel so special. I feel like they joked a lot about it not feeling like anything nearly as exciting as the big orchestral score from last year, but I thought this was so well done. And so on brand. Oh, if the fake out is gonna keep playing chapter one, which is he gonna choose? He's flipping back and forth. And finally, locks in chapter two. Chris? Chris, honey, are you awake? W wait. Is that a... A knife? No! No! 
Chris, did you eat all the pie? It is your knife in this empty tin, is it not? Oh, Chris, am I gonna have to lock the oven again? What a fake out. Well, hurry out of bed. It's time for school. Your bed. Clothes drawer. Even after a long night, the sunrise is the same as always. There's five dollars in your brother's drawer. Which people are speculating maybe that means chapter two is going to come with a five dollar price tag. It makes sense Toby would want to charge for this. There's a cartridge of cat petters. Caddy and caddy can be seen faintly written on it. There's five dollars. You reluctantly borrowed five dollars. On the computer's desktop is a folder called Epic Games. It's a poorly drawn design for a game. It seems like the last boss is a creature with giant rainbow wings. Doesn't seem like this game ever saw the light of day, which I guess is referring to Undertale with Asriel. It's a birdcage. When the door is closed, there's no escape. There's no time to read Read books, just generally. A cactus. There's not much to say about it. How to draw dragons is at the bottom of the drawer. The purple character on the cover is dressed immodestly. Your brother will never return this book. The one Birdly was bothering us about. It's what they call you. The door is locked. Well, shall we go back to school? Chris, there you are. Even Susie showed up before you. <laughs> hey, Chris, if I knew you were gonna be late, I wouldn't have showed up on time. Susie, please don't kick the desk. Treat school property like you would treat people. Okay, next time I'll aim for your vitals. Th that's not what... Uh, in, a in any case, good morning class. We have a lot to go over today. First, we're starting the reading from page 142. Any, any volunteers? Um, I guess I could read the... Ah, trouble yourself not, Noel. I will valiantly take this blow of humiliation. Um, that's okay. I, I can... Ahem! Page 142. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Times are pretty good. Times are pretty bad. Mediocre times, iffy times, so-so times. Listening to this, your eyes begin to close automatically. Have a nice day, everyone. And p please remember your group projects. Oh, uh, Chris, are... Are you okay? You were, um, sleeping all class. D don't worry. I'm not mad. Just, just concerned. Usually you only sleep through the start. Good luck and, and rest well tonight, okay? You know, maybe they're always tired because they're up all night ripping their own heart out. The computer wallpaper is updated. The buff embracing heroes are now edited to be four inches apart. There's dialogue about proper distancing at the school dance. You wonder if your mother had some influence on this change. Chris? This whole partner thing. You didn't lose sleep over it, did you? Lost sleep from being Susie's partner, or actually my sleep quality increased. Uh, uh, Chris, th that's good, I think. So maybe you were just staying up late, talking to Asriel online again? Uh, wait, y you can't do that, right? I, I hope the internet gets fixed soon. I don't want to revert into my primal form, which, like, what? <laughs> cool Susie chilling at the lockers. Well, look who it is, the school zombie. You were sleeping like a corpse all class. Ah, oh, the implications of that are just incredible. Huh, what's the matter? Had trouble going Betty by last night? Me too, Chris. Like, I could sleep after yesterday. Just waiting for today felt like years. <laughs> Great joke. Did all that stuff really happen? Lancer, Ralsei, everyone? Are they still? Look. You've been wondering the same thing, right? I love the idea that we've all collectively been, like, waiting and speculating and looking for these answers. Come on already! just ravenously pulling us to the closet. All right, Chris, this is it, moment of truth. Everything we've been waiting for is just behind this. If we uh, open this and there's nothing inside, will we still be... Screw it, let's just open it already. Um, S Susie? Yeah. Noel, hey, what the hell are you doing here? 
Um, sorry to bother you, but I, I, what, I, I, Birdley and I were going to the library to, to do some research for our group projects, and if it's okay, would you want to come too? Oh, oh, Chris, you can come too, I, I mean. Uh, I, I mean, we're like, uh, busy with, uh, Chris, help me out here. What do we say? Hanging out alone in the closet or crime? We'll just do a crime. You know, just committing crimes. Just gonna do some crimes and go to jail forever. It sucks. Uh, oh, well, uh, that sounds, uh, just... Have fun, you two. I'll, I'll be at the library. Chris... If you could bring her by later, it would mean a lot to me. Susie's blank stare. Wait, Chris, what the hell was that? Why would Noelle ask me to do homework with her? Death wish much? Does she want to fail? Wait a second. Wait a second. Chris, did you notice how nervous she was? And like, blushing and stuff? Chris, you don't think she... Uh, sh she's on to our secret identities! You know, this Dark World stuff. Damn, we gotta keep this under wraps, Chris. This is our thing, you know? Anyway, enough waiting already, right? Let's go! Oh, they get a running start at it. Oh my god, I love the animation of them hurling themselves through the door barreling their way down to the bottom. The transition on the way down is so awesome. We wouldn't have gotten to see that last time. They go full on, you know, Sonic marbles crashing to the bottom. We get the Maraca dog again at the very end of the stream with some big wide eyes and he starts to kind of wander off a little unassuredly, just unsure where he's headed. And there we go, just like that, out of nowhere. I personally did not expect this. Uh, because Toby had said so many times the entire game was going to release as one package, but we're actually having a chapter two drop tomorrow. It's insane. I'm going to live stream it like as soon as humanly possible, like minutes after that drops. I have the stream scheduled over on my Let's Play channel. I'll have links to that down below. Guys, come check it out. I'm basically going to play through the entire thing in one shot. I can't help myself. I I genuinely just like have to know. We've been waiting years. So yes, there wasn't that much different. <laughs> took a lot of time to replay through the game and match the footage just to learn like not that much had changed, but it was a good excuse for me to replay the game right before this release. Keep an eye out around this channel because obviously I'm going to be doing a lot of Delta Rune <laughs> focused stuff in the near future. Got to balance that out with some other videos I had scheduled. Here's one last reminder. Go and check out Dead Estate over on Steam. You can wishlist that now. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to patrons of this channel. Thank you to Toby and the folks over at Fan Gamer for putting this all together. It was really a special treat.